Well, good damn afternoon, Americans. Jericho Green here with you once again, people. Now, 2022 has shown us what might be coming. So if you're fed up with everything being so expensive and the threat of a recession hanging over us, it's time to take action. A precious metal IRA uses tax advantage, gold and silver to keep inflation at bay and give you protection from financial nightmares. And you'll get a stunning free three ounce silver American virtue coin when you open a qualifying IRA account this month. You can't go wrong with noble gold. Call 877-646-5347 or for more info, visit noblegoldinvestments.com. And remember, there's always a risk of loss and past performance is not indicative of future results. And that's that, people. <laughs> what up? <laughs> boy, oh boy. If we had a five-gallon bucket and we threw it, we attached a rope to it so we could bring it back up. And we threw that five-gallon bucket into the well of bullshit. This morning, we threw it in there and we hauled it back up and it would be overflowing. <laughs> Our bucket of bullshit is overflowing today. <sighs> boy, oh boy. I mean, <laughs> there are actual real life clowns looking at society today and being like, I, I couldn't even be that silly. You call it, you call their world a clown world. This is a fucking clown world. The, I mean, do you call them sociopaths, narcissists? Is that what you call them? What do you call somebody that is, is so, has their head so far up their own ass? <laughs> like when they fart, it's their, oh, they think it's great. What, what do you call people like that? Because there are some people in our society who have way too much power and, and authority and sway over people's opinions to where, like, are they, they, they either are oblivious to it or when they get around their own and they close the doors, they all have to be laughing at us and how we believe this shit and how we just take it. I mean, it, one of the two has to be. Because it's it's painfully obvious, yet they just keep they keep plowing ahead. I don't get it, man. Shout out to the amazing Wong. Thank you very much. Super chat, cherry popper. You've broken the financial hymen. JG, I agree with you on a lot of things. However, we finally disagree on something. All right. Jingle All the Way was a good movie. Hell, <laughs> what the fuck? Now, I know that life, we're all watching the same show. We just have different seats, right? We're all, so we see the same show from different angles. But I would have to question whether your eyeballs work all together. Do you have vision problems? The amazing Wong. If so, then I can understand this, this last statement, this last inflammatory statement. Do you have audio and visual problems? Maybe you can't hear and you can't see because those would have to be the only excuses for thinking that Jingle All the Way was a good movie. Maybe you're young and you saw it when you were a child and you haven't seen it since. That could be another one. Maybe you're just a prisoner of the moment. Maybe you're trapped in 1996. I don't know, The Amazing Wong, but that movie was... Like, if you get a snow show, the real wide ones, that's how big of a scoop of bullshit this movie was. Jamie! Jamie! Terrible. I'm terrible, man. I'm not a pure good. Ugh. Oh, speaking of Arnie, <laughs> tonight uh, on Double Impact with my man Gabe and Sean, we're going to be talking about Terminator 2. I've seen that movie a thousand times. I still remember seeing it um, when it came out on video because I couldn't go watch it in the theater. Um... But I'm about halfway through watching it again. I like to watch it the day of the show so it's fresh in my mind. But uh, it's going to be a good one. You go ahead, but you're going to be able to put this, this episode we're going to do in a time capsule. You know, those capsules they don't open for 100 years. This episode needs to be inside of it. It's going to be fun. Endo Slim. Hope you're keeping those bitches in line. <laughs> Endo Slim, bitch. 
Thank you for the Hamilton. What's up, JG? Did I get the financial hymen? LOL. If not, better luck next time. Next time. Got it. No, you didn't get it this time. It's okay. The amazing Wong did. Don't give up, Endo Slim. Don't give up. You one day will break the financial hymen. You will pop the super chat cherry. Lord German Husbando taking us down memory lane saying, I miss Blockbuster video. Me too. I love Blockbuster. You just run into friends there. I remember one time running into one of my teachers there. I was like, what the fuck are you doing here? How come you're not uh, behind a desk at school? What do you mean? You have a life? What? So weird running into your teachers in public. What the fuck? You eat? You entertain yourself? What's going on here? I thought you were just a damn teacher. Joe Mello, thank you. Hey, JG, can you do the voice of the illegal alien trying to get the popcorn machine to work? Thanks, brother. Keep up the good work. Oh, yeah. Um, if you guys don't know what Joe Mello is talking about, I'll probably see you tonight also, Joe Mello, in the um, comment section on Double Impact. Um, in New York, it's no bullshit. Um, they took, they made a, like this big outdoor tent. Like if you go to some fancy outdoor wedding or something, huge, giant, white tents. And they got one of those and put it on, I think, called Randall Island in New York, right by Manhattan. And what they have inside of that tent is 500 male, war age, male illegals. And you're thinking, well, Jericho, so what? They just have them in a big tent. They just have them sitting in there. There's nothing in there for them to do. They're just sitting in a covered area. Big deal. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous, comrade. This is America. We do shit to the, over the top. So, of course, these illegals, they're here illegally. We know they are. There's no question. There's no question like, oh, well, let's find out if these guys are. They are here illegally. But instead of sending them back home, they gave these men no bullshit. Uh, na uh, South American, what's it they call it? Culturally appropriate food, South American fare, meaning the food that they eat back home. They got people making their food. Not a sack lunch with a bologna sandwich, a bag of chips, and an apple in it like they would give your fucking ass. No, they have South American fares, you know, so they don't miss home. <laughs> we wouldn't want them to get homesick. South American food. Fluff and fold laundry service. How many of you here have laundry service paid for by somebody else? Didn't think so. Phone centers so they can call home. ET phone home. You're paying for those phones. Call centers. 24-hour snacks and tea. 24 hours. You wake up in the morning. Oh. Ooh, it's three o'clock in the morning. I am so hungry. Don't worry about it. We got snacks and tea. Popcorn machines. <laughs> Popcorn machines. And this is my personal favorite. This is the one I love the most. PS or uh, Xboxes. They have Xboxes there so they can play FIFA, maybe a little car, Call of Duty. Hmm? Doesn't that sound nice? What are you at work right now? You at home right now? You're doing something, aren't you? You're doing something. You're working. You're doing a working on a project. You're doing chores. You're doing laundry, dishes. You are doing something. But if you only had the luck of being here legally, you would have to be doing nothing. Playing PS5 or Xbox, maybe both. Maybe got half P PS5, half Xbox. Because you don't know. You might have some guys that are P Xbox fans or strictly PS5 fans. So you want to have options. You could be kicking it, putting your feet up, waiting for your laundry service, eating some of that fresh popcorn. I wait, this popcorn is a throw. Ha! Huh? You could be calling back home. Hey, girl, what you doing? <laughs> what you doing? Nothing? Just up here chilling, playing video games and shit, eating some snacks, drinking tea. Hmm. 
But no, you're a dumb American ass. You're generating income. You're generating tax revenue. You're shaping a life. You're building a business. You fool. <laughs> uh, but what Joe Mello was talking about <laughs> is I would actually, you know what? This probably isn't being hyperbolic. This is probably how it really happens. Excuse me. Excuse me, person that works here. Are you in charge of the fluff and fall laundry service? I think it says right there, me, look, look, no, no, look. It says right there, fluff and fall. I see all fluff and no fall. <laughs> you motherfuckers. Fluff and fold service? Man, I bet there's some people around the world, some illegals around the world saying, Man, shit, why did I go? Why did I come to this stupid country? Why did I choose to go illegally into this stupid fucking country? I could have been over there in America playing video games, fluff and fold, snacks, popcorn, tea. Damn it. Why'd I sneak into this rotten son of a bitch? Mm. Damn it. Next time, I need to make my way over to America. Well, they will take care of you. And probably the best part, because what you don't want is a bunch of stressed out illegals. Okay? That's what you don't want. Leave that stress for the citizens. Illegals, take it easy. All right, my dad would tell me, take it easy, Greasy. You got a long way to slide. So take it easy, illegals. We'll, we'll supply everything. We'll take on all the stress. But what you don't want is a bunch of stressed out illegals. So for that reason, we won't bother you with our pesky borders. Are. She won't even come down there. We want you illegals to chill. We want you to relax. We want you illegals to be a, like a bunch of Kobe cows. You know how they raise those Kobe, that Kobe beef and that Wagyu beef? It's free range. It's frolicking and running through the meadows, eating grass. They give them beer. They get a 32-ounce beer every day. And they feed them honey and oats. And they massage and brush them because they want the cows to be docile. They believe that that lifestyle creates more fat, more marbling in the meat, makes it more tender. That's how we want our illegals to live. We don't want you stressing over who's at the door. Show me your papers. You can't be here. Get on this bus. We're sending you back. <laughs> no, 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 senor. Who was that? What's that song? Just give me that loving, baby. Do, 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 do. Just drop them chonies, baby. What song is that? And in the in the chorus, it would say, no, 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 senor. We don't want you working. Hey, come here. Uh-uh. You've been trekking, no, you've been trekking all across the desert and shit. Where'd you come from? All the way from Haiti? You came from China? You came from Africa? You came from Pakistan? And the rest of you guys came from south of the American border. You guys have done too much already. No, no. Hey, come here. Give me those boots. Have a seat. Put your feet up. Palm leaves. Let's get you, let's get you cooled off. I don't see any ice cold water over here. No, no, no. Cancel that. You probably want a cerveza, huh? Bring him a cold one. Huh? Grapes? You want some grapes? Sure. Somebody get over here and get some grapes in this man's mouth. Oh, I'm sorry. You want them peeled? Peel them! We don't want you guys stressed out. You've made it. You're across the border. Relax. You're like company. When you guys have company come to your house, you don't make them do shit, do you? You sit down, hang out. We'll bring you some snacks, some drinks, whatever you want. You're a guest in our house. I don't want these people stressed. That's ridiculous. You guys just hang out, huh? Hang out. Get comfy. You know, let's check this out. Speaking of. Speaking of the illegals and how they're treated here, which is great, good for them. Let me go to something here. Let me show you guys something. 
And this is the reason that I didn't get to Good Gun because I was reading this article being upset. I was too busy being upset. Okay. This is why. Oh, man. You guys ever want to see a human piece of shit? Just look up Gavin Newsom. Here we go. Gavin Newsom warns immigration system about break. About oh, uh, immigration system about to break unless Dems take some responsibility. Hmm. Wait, I thought break. Hold on. They spelled it B-R-E-A-K. Break, like break something is B-R-A-K-E, right? Am I wrong? Let me go back to the comment section. You tell me. You know, like take a break. But if you break something in half, that's B-R-A-K-E, right? You can see my public education bubbling to the surface. Man, we're going to settle this shit right now. No, what? So this is, so the word break, a device for slowing or stopping a moving vehicle. So that's the only, um, that's the only way you use that break. So brakes on cars, the other break, they spelled it right. Okay. Cause I have, I've seen like articles and you're like, no way they didn't get this shit wrong. They didn't misspell that word and they do. All right, here we go. So it says it's going to break unless Democrats take some responsibility. All right, Gavin, cause you are responsible for this shit. You did turn our state into a, um, a fucking sanctuary state. So here we go. Okay, I'll let you hear it from the lying piece of shit's mouth or the horse's mouth. Sorry, I know I got that one wrong. Didn't think it was lying piece of shit. I knew it was horse. Here we go. What do you have to say for yourself, Gavin? Just got back from Mexicali, which is on the other side of the border wall. I had the opportunity to meet with the governor and meet with some international humanitarian leaders as well as many migrants from Haiti, from Guatemala, uh, and from parts of Mexico that are waiting for their asylum processing right here at the border. Mm. So we're here now on the other side uh, in Calexico and uh, here just to get an understanding and deeper understanding of what the world looks like pre uh, Title 42 and what it likely is going to look like in a few weeks post Title 42. So I'm not sure why he needed to go down there to really get a grasp on what's going on at the border. I think we all fucking know what's going on at the border. And again, Title 42, that's being repealed on the 21st. And Title 42 was uh, basically a law that Biden, or, uh, Trump put into place to keep illegals from coming here while they wait for their asylum claims. But we could deport them or send them back over the border, and that's where they had to wait for their asylum claim. They couldn't come here and kick it. Um, it says we're already at capacity at nine of our sites. We can't continue to fund all of these sites because of the budgetary pressures are uh, pressures now being placed on this state and the offsetting issue that I have to address. That's what Gavin said. So they're already at capacity. He said, I mean, that's just uh, uh, talking about Ron DeSantis flying some of those immigrants to um, Martha's Vineyard. He said, I mean, that's just comedy and tragedy. The fact is that we've got right, what we've got right now is not working and it's about to break in a post 42 world unless we take some responsibility and ownership. I'm saying that as a Democrat, I'm not saying that to point fingers. I'm saying that as a father, I'm saying that as someone that feels responsibility for being part of the solution and I'm trying to do my best here. Fuck you. You lying son of a bitch. You are crying about the system, the immigration system in California being overtaxed. And you're the reason. You made it a sanctuary state, you fucking idiot. So you can't make it inviting for illegals and then turn around and say, hey, we need to do something about it. There's too many illegals here. You fucking dummy. Like, are you, did you not know that you did that? Do you not remember that you proudly made California a sanctuary state? 
You proudly declared California as a sanctuary state, and now you're like, oh shit, the system's going to break. You stupid asshole, you put the weight on the system. He can't be that stupid, is he? I think what it is is he thinks we're that stupid, and some of us are. There are plenty of dumbasses like the ones who put him in the office. I'm talking to you, California women's vaginas. You are the reason. He's cute. Endo Slim, again, thank you. Well, I'm out, JG. Catch you at 1 a.m. as usual. Off to be productive, a um, productive member of society. Why would you do that? <laughs> Why would you want to be a productive member of society? It's so easy to be a piece of shit, Endo Slim. But I'm glad you're doing it your way. Glad. Let's see. I know we have more. I know we have more up in her. My goodness. That shit's just amazing to me. That is amazing. You can sit up there out of one side of your mouth and create the problem. And out of the other side, you bitch about the problem. Yes, they're over there uh, at capacity full. A, a couple months ago, you just gave them free health care. Free health care for all illegals, no matter their immigration status. And a couple months later, it's, we got to do something. Brendan Gerzlak, thank you. The respect of marriage is definitely not a vibe. Ooh, I respect marriage when it's between a man and a woman. That's actually the definition of marriage. If it's between anything else, it's no longer marriage. Ooh, it's a vibe. Agreed. Agreed. You can't give me a cheeseburger and then call it uh, a chicken dinner. It's not what it is. It's a hamburger. Or it's a cheeseburger, not a chicken dinner. So don't give me that shit and call it uh, call it a marriage because it's not. It doesn't have the ingredients of a marriage. It doesn't have the same ingredients. I can't follow the recipe for a cake and then call it a uh, prime rib. Doesn't. That's not the way it goes. So you can't call it marriage if it's between a man and a man or a woman and a woman or somebody identifying all that other crazy mixed up gibberish shit. Jason Dixon, thank you, says, I didn't come from anywhere. I'm native. Aren't we all? Aren't we all? Well, you know, Americans, we are. We're native. I didn't come from anywhere else. I know that. <clears throat> Leonard S., thank you. I feel certain Brandon is getting contact info on the illegals so he can remind them how to vote at election time. Well, yeah, that's what it's all about. We're not bringing these people here because we're so benevolent and loving. Oh, my God, illegals, come here. We have plenty. We should be helping the world. Bullshit. Voting. Power. That's it. The Amazing Wong, again, thank you for the Hamilton. JG, did you hear Cambridge Dictionary changing the definition of the words man and woman to be inclusive of people who identify as another gender other than their biological sex? I didn't hear about it, but I've heard about them doing it with other words, with other things. Like, I think they actually they actually changed the definition of marriage. And they've also put in Ebonics words and made them real words. So fuck the dictionary. But that makes total sense. They're, see that they're literally changing the history books. A dictionary is verbal history, right? It's verbal history. And they're literally changing the verbal history book. Like, literally. Like, I know I say literally a lot. Like, literally. I'm so, like, literally. But, like, literally, they are changing the history books. Oh, man. Mike Tyson, too, says Lightfoot. Hashtag 700 club yesterday. Did they hit 700 homicides for the year? But how is that possible, Mike Tyson, too, if there's only 365 days in the year? Spunbearing 65, thank you for the Hamilton. He says, impeach Mayorkas. Yes, because he's doing nothing. That's why I call these politicians uh, tonsils or gallbladders. They're things that the body of America can do without. 
and function just fine. Function just fine without them. In some cases, better. Some, you know, some people you got to get your appendix taken out before it bursts. So it could be a problem. Your tonsils can keep giving you all kinds of infections and shit. So sometimes you do even better without them. I think that would be the case here. Yeah, Oscar Gonzalez, JG or Jericho, remember that pastor that said amen and a woman? Yeah, that dude should be thrown out. He should be thrown out on his ass. Katie Pap, Kat, Kat, Katie Pap, Katie Pap. Hi, everyone. I'm not from America. Oh, welcome. <laughs> we got a few people in here not from America. We got Canada represented. We got the UK, Sweden, Australia, Crikey, Japan. Where are you from, Katie Pat? Hope I'm saying that right. If you're not from America, where are you from, girl? Talk to me. Talk to me. Um, let's see. Lieutenant Malachi, do you think AOC is hot? <laughs> I mean, she's not ugly, but when she starts talking and shit, yeah, I man, that'll definitely make uh make your dick soft. But if she was sitting there in a picture with her mouth closed, no, she's not ugly, she's pretty. Katie Papp says, I'm from Hong Kong. Oh, what's up? What's going on in Hong Kong? Man, hope you guys stay free. Um Appreciate you being here. What time is it in Hong Kong? Bet you it's not 12 in the afternoon like it is here. I'm glad you're here, Katie Pap. Thank you. Careless, I'm from Atlanta, which is not America. <laughs> I mean, it's physically inside of our borders, yes. Um, Atlanta is inside the borders of the United States, but it's not America. You're right about that. Ken Conley says she has horse teeth, AOC. <laughs> yeah, she could bite an apple through a fence, but that's why I said, hey, she keeps her mouth closed. Damn, 4 a.m.? You getting up early? You staying up late, Katie Pap? Damn. Appreciate it. I killed Fritz. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, my brain. My brain. Oscar Gonzalez. Yes, AOC has eyes has bug eyes like Biden uh, when he has, <laughs> when he has, when he's drugged up on amphetamine. Uh, I think it was Roseanne Barr who said AOC has re uh, realtor eyes, like a real estate agent. <laughs> that shit was funny. She said she has realtor eyes. <laughs> that shit was too funny. Oh, man. Tammy, yeah, I did change my hat, but don't make me go get it and put it back on. Rome 13 says, I'm from Planet Vulcan. I remember on Living Color, they were doing a skit making fun of Star Trek. And uh, Jim Carrey was playing Captain Kirk, of course. And he says, are you out of your Vulcan mind? <laughs> that shit was funny. Mandy Westcott. Mandy Westcott. She says Biden has beady eyes. I ask you this. I'll pose this question, Mandy. Which Biden are you talking about? Are you talking about the old Biden from like 10 or 15 years ago? Or are you talking about this new version? That's the skin's been stretched over a, a human skeleton. Or like Arnold would say, a human endoskeleton. Because this new Biden we got, he don't look like the old one. <clears throat> he don't look like the old one. Eey, oy, eey. He looks fucking terrible now. Oh, yesterday there was a super chat that came in. Like, I didn't even see it till after I'd already signed off. Uh, but it was from Big 12 Sports, uh, Big 12 Sports and Smack, a friendship group. I've been on his uh, channel. Cool dude. Thank you, man. Um, for uh, Twomsky, he says, It's funny that people just can't follow common decency in chat rooms. Anyway, happy holidays, holidays Jericho, and go Cowboys. Keep the cowgirls. They're shit. The Cowboys suck. You barely got past the Texans. If the 49ers face the Dallas Cowboys again in the playoffs like we did last year, we're going to beat your ass. The Cowboys suck. Dak Prescott ain't shit. Never been shit. He's either hurt or he sucks. Fuck the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> 
But when he was what he was referring to is yesterday, you know, we had to excuse two people from the comment section permanently. Um, so yeah, it was a tough day for them yesterday. It really was. <laughs> Spunbury 65 butt hair plug Biden. Yeah, that's the new one. Because man, I tell you, um, he does not look like he did not too long ago. We're not talking Biden when he was a teenager. We're talking Biden like 10 years ago. Look at any picture of you 10 years ago. You don't look completely fucking different, do you? What's all this nonsense in here? You talk about play. You guys are being way too fucking play. Look at this. Go Cowboys, drunken sailor. You must be drunk. Tim Starr, you're right. Brock Purdy is the shit. <laughs> you thought I was going to read it the other way, huh? AB, go Cowboys. Nope, trash. Marty, Packers, trash. Tammy, A, I already know your, your ills. Uh, the Pleminator. Hey, Jericho, easy now, Squid. Are you a Cowboys fan too? Hey, we all have our problems, don't we? D. Heather Green, go Chiefs. Pat Mahomes can eat a bowl of frozen uh, Kansas City dicks. Bill Nicholson. Nickel, Nicholason, Nicholason? Bill. Yeah, go Niners. You're right, Bill. Bill's the only one right so far. The rest of you are wrong. It's two left shoes. <laughs> None of the miser go Oilers. A couple decades behind, but I know what you mean. <laughs> hey, the Oilers and the Packers should get together. My career, sea bitches. No, fuck. I can't stand. We're going to beat the shit out of the Seahawks tomorrow. You kidding me? A bunch of fucking bums. Should change your name from the Seahawks to the fucking bums. Gonna beat the brakes off you shit stains tomorrow. <sighs> Nicholas Steels. <laughs> Nicholas Skeels, America's taint. <laughs> Anytime you can get, get taint in there, that shit's funny. I like to call it a skin bridge, too. Mike Tyson, too. Redskins. We got them, I think, after this week. We're gonna beat the shit out of them, too. Sorry. The Redskins, yeah, not the Commanders. What the fuck is that? <laughs> Rome 13, I like Dallas for the outsiders. That's the only Dallas I like, too. Sergeant D, I'm fatter now. Yeah, I think I agree with that. I am, too, from 10 years ago. But your face doesn't look completely fucking different. Like, you're not going to go see somebody you haven't seen in 10 years, and they're going to be like, I'm sorry, who are you? No, they'll be like, oh, yeah, Sergeant D, what's up, man? Carissa, the cat lady, what up from Texas, Jericho? It's all good out here, but don't come in under that Dallas shit. Oh, Pleminate there. He says, Dak sucks. However, go Cowboys. Fuck San Fran. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so funny. Yeah, Dak Prescott sucks shit, man. And so do the Cowboys. What happened last year when we played you in your house in the playoffs? What'd you do? Who fucked it all up? Dak Prescott. <laughs> Cowboys, you guys ain't shit. <laughs> oh man, okay. Let's get it. Let's let's handle some business because I can sit here and shit on the Cowboys all day. Uh Wild Bill, uh Dolphins, we beat their ass too. Lions are doing good. They are. They finally don't suck ass. <laughs> <laughs> Mitch Connor says your mom's an oiler. Mitch, Mitch Connor, your mom's been oiled. How about that? Go Browns. Ooh, somebody called the 49ers the vaginers. Ooh. <laughs> That's right, Jean Gray. Seahawks are water pigeons. The Ferg, didn't Navy lose? Yes, we lost. We didn't lose. Yeah, they did lose, but that was a shitty game. The Navy running back fumbled the ball at the end of the game. It was, dude, that game was hard as hell to watch. It was like three to three. It was a low scoring, shitty ass game. Hardly any passes. That game sucked. Both of them sucked. But yeah, the Navy, Navy did lose. But that's the only thing we lose at is inconsequential fucking football games. Everything else we win. Everything else the Navy wins. Everything. <laughs> uh, 
All right. <clears throat> Enough talking about your guys' shitty teams. Don't forget, web store, mygreengear.com. Look at that. Mm, even got the matching shirt. Look, mom, matching. Mygreengear.com, 10% off all green gear. Right new. So, thumbnail, that's the most important thing. Okay? That thumbnail is the most important thing. What? Hold on. D. Heather Green, 49ers haven't been good since Cool Joe was quarterback? I'm not even going to fucking... I'm not going to dignify that with a response. Uh, Oscar Gonzalez, no bobblehead yet, Jay. We're working on it, man. Hold on, Oscar. Shit. Hold on. Perfection takes time. Anders Hagberg. What's up, man? Says, neck buddy, please. Uh, <laughs> Da, neck buddy. Da, I wonder if if I was a was a was a Dallas Cowboys fan and my neck buddy was a 49er fan, could we get along? Da. <laughs> there, that's a Cowboys fan for you. Da, I like the Cowboys. Da. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> Thumbnail. What is that? I know that building looks familiar to you. Yes, it's exactly the building you think it is. Neck Buddy merch is coming. It's in the mail, Spunberry65. It's on the way. <clears throat> but that's the building you think it is. That is the white. That's the white house, except it's not white, is it? No, 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 no. What? Wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You guys thought they would light up the White House in red, white, and blue? <laughs> no. What the fuck would they do that for? Why? Why? Why would you light up a nation's capital? Not just ours. Why would you light up any nation's capital in colors other than those of your flag. And yes, Obama, uh, J A Obama, J underscore a Obama did do it first, but it <laughs> doesn't make it piss me off any less that this isn't the first time it's been done. Um, wow. Pleminator, you must be pretty upset. You know, the Cowboys suck. Don't you, when they lost, they lost to the Texans last week, you knew your team sucks and they ain't going nowhere. You think you're going to get past the Eagles? <laughs> Car! Nope. But I know Obama lit up the White House in rainbow colors before, and that was real shitty too. But they did it again. And why would they do it again? We're not in June. We're not in October. We're in December. So you would think, call me crazy. Go ahead. I'm ready for it. But wouldn't you think that if the White House was going to light up the White House in any colors in December, you think it might be red and green? You know, Christmas colors, since it's Christmas time. <laughs> no. You're thinking with your old pre-woke American mind. Of course, all in good fun, Pleminator. Cowboys suck shit. But you're thinking with you're thinking about it through the prism of pre-woke, pre, you know, Trump coming down the escalator. That's what you're doing. In your mind, yeah, that would make sense. You light it up in red and green because it's Christmas time, or you light it up in red, white, and blue because this is fucking America, maybe? No. Yesterday, the reason that they lit it up is because they lit it up in rainbow colors is because they signed into law. You can't dispute it anymore, you fucking bigot. Huh? You can't dispute it anymore. It's law, 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 law. The Respect Marriage Act is now law. Did we respect your version of marriage? No, you cis gender straight monsters. This is the marriage we're going to respect. This is the union we're going to respect. There's an alphabet soup group or Ku Klux trans marriage. That's what we're going to respect. Not yours. Not the type of marriage that got us here in the first place. You know, nuclear family shit. No, it's time for us to dance on top of that and disrespect it and spit on it if we can. You lit 
the White House up in rainbow fucking colors. And of course, Biden is perverted, our grandpa and chief, Mr. Hey, this isn't the mall. YMCA, it's fun to stay at the YMCA. Hey. Of course, he's doing his speech, you know, in the Rose Garden. And they had uh, who they who they drag out, who they fucking give CPR to. Cindy Lauper. Cindy Cindy Lauper. You, my good lady, look like shit. Like you were rode hard and put away wet. So they dragged, I don't know what nursing home they injected her with adrenochrome or some shit, but they brought her out there. And then that guy, uh, Sam Smith, who ain't even American. So you're celebrating a law in America and you brought a fucking Brit over here to sing. Okay. So he comes out, you know that song, Stay With Me? That's what he's saying. And I'm just wondering. So the White House got lit up in rainbow colors. We know who that represents. Ku Klux Trans Alphabet Soup Group, right? The Confederate Christian. What is, are you trying to get kicked out of here? What's going on? So the White House is lit up. You got Cindy, Cindy Lopper up there with putting her fist in the air. Bitch, put your hand down. If this ain't a podium in 1968 Mexico City, put your fucking hand down. Why is Cindy Lauper up there with her fist in the air like she's Angela Damn Davis? So they dusted her ass off and brought her up there. Probably paid Sam Smith in Coke to be up there. But of course, Biden wouldn't get it together for this one. He never gets it together before when he's in front of the mic. So of course he stumbled and he bumbled. He said, uh, 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 thanks to all the all the, the speakers and the, you know, Cindy Lauper and Sam and, well, you know, the, the, the gay men's choir in D.C. Uh. You know what? Let me show you. I like to tell you, but it's better if I show you. I'm trying to tell you a story. Let's see, Instagram, hey. Instagram. Here we go. What do you say now, guys? How how could, how could Biden fuck this moment up? Huh? I'll tell you. Well, he'll tell you even better. You can hear it from the old horse's mouth. <laughs> Why do they keep putting these stupid ass aviators on it? Why does he wear aviators? You ain't a pilot. Take that shit off. If you're not aviating or you're not in aviation, don't wear aviators. Is that too much to ask? Look at this shit. Now, special thanks to our performers, Joy, Sam, and Cindy. Look, you know, in the gay man's choir, in Washington, D.C., gay man's married for choir. <laughs> I'm sorry, what'd you say? What the fuck did you say? A special thanks to our performers, Joy, Sam, and Cindy. Look, you know, in the gay man's choir in Washington, D.C., gay man's marriage required. <laughs> gay men's marriage required. Oh, my goodness. Damn it, sloppy show. <laughs> Oh yeah, the, the gay men's choir, Washington D.C. The gay, the gay guys. <clears throat> so, gay, 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 right? Gay, 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 gay. Sounds like a machine gun. Gay, 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 right? Gay everything. Gay performers. We got gay colors. It's for gay marriage. <clears throat> but you guys forgot something. 
You guys forgot. You guys are too busy looking at the front burners. You got to look on the back burner. Oh, yeah. And interracial marriage, too. You forgot. This bullshit. <laughs> this bullshit Respect Marriage Act is not only for the gay folks. And I would I can see how you would think that it's only for the gays since that's all they're talking about. But buried deep inside, buried deep inside, if you look to the bottom, you will find the mixed race couples. But you got to look deep. You really got to got to dig in there. Like it's a it's a bush, like it's a woman's bush from the 70s. You really got to get through all you got to get through all that hair. To, oh, there it is. There's the fucking claim. So if you dig through all these rainbow colored pubes and you'll finally get there it is. There's the other reason we're here is for the interracial marriage. Like the gay marriage, that is the the meat of the commercial. And then the interracial marriage is the real fast shit they say at the end so they don't get sued. We're here for the respect Marriage Act, yay! And we're also here for interracial marriage too. Just real quick, I think, don't, that's not it's not important. The interracial thing, that's not important. That was just the Trojan horse to get us in here. Now that we're in here, fabulous! It's all about the gay marriage, as they call it. I call it a union or something like that because marriage is between a man and a woman. So if it's not a man and a woman, it can't be. I know. I'm just thinking about it with my simple mind. But don't forget, also, it's for interracial <laughs> marriage, too. Like, was that in danger? Huh? We have to do this? And the people who were there, it wasn't just, <clears throat> it wasn't just Biden is pervertus and the cackler in chief and pop off Pelosi and Schumer, all those people were there, but there were also 5,000 people in attendance. 5,000 people came to watch this momentous occasion for something so stupid and pointless as gay marriage and interracial marriage being federal law now. Talk about priorities. Uh, case Atie. Atti. Case Atti. Hope I said that right. Um, thank you for the Twomsky. JG, first saw you on the B Tatum show, watching you now for nearly a year. I love the content. Funny as hell. Thank you for what you do. God bless you and your family. And same to you, Case. Hope I said that right. I appreciate your time and your donation. Time and your money. Thank you very much. So that's just weird. <laughs> that's just weird to me. It's supposed to be for two things, but all they're focusing on is that one thing because that's the hot, hot button issue right now. It's the hot ticket. <clears throat> Hold on a sec. Scott E. Harry Pie won't hurt you. No, it sure won't. I didn't say anything was wrong with it. I'm just saying. We gotta, you know, get get through it all. That's all I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> uh, Tobister McDonkey. Uh, yes, you are right. He says gay marriage is already legal. Not to mention that. Not to mention it's already been done. They there's so much work for them to do. There's this huge pile of work that needs to be done, but they keep ignoring it. I like to use the analogy. If you're standing in a long hallway and there's 50 feet of hallway to your left and 50 feet of hallway to your right and bearing down on you from the left is a ravenous pit bull foaming at the mouth, arr, 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 running as fast as it, can, as it can, it's going to rip you apart when it reaches you. And to the right, you have a little girl in a dress with a balloon. Hi, mister. And you're putting all your effort, get that fucking kid. You're focusing everything on that innocent little harmless child when you have this ravenous beast bearing down on you over here. Totally ignore it. Totally ignore it. Let's focus on this thing that will do nothing to harm us. It means nothing. So stupid. 
so fucking dumb. And they're all gathered there. Maybe that's what, what we need to do. Maybe in order to get Kamala Harris to come to the border, because she is the border czar, don't forget that title. I know she wears a lot of them. First this, first that, female this, color that. But she's also the border czar. And when you're a czar, your job is to basically enforce policy. That's what your job. Whatever, whatever comes before czar, whatever adjective comes before czar, that's what you're supposed to focus on. Border czar. Focus on the border. Maybe... Because we tried the, the border being overrun and being, we're being invaded. That didn't get her down there. I'm hoping they tried my idea if we have a, a trail of 70-plus-year-old men's pubic hairs leading to the border. That will get her there because you know how she loves old dick. That didn't work. So maybe if we have Mexico, maybe Mexico, if you start persecuting gay people, like you can't go here, you can't do that, you can't be this, you can't be that, maybe that will get her down to the border. Because she was certainly out there laughing and cackling with 5,000 other jackasses when they signed this useless shit into law. So maybe we finally found what Kamala, the Ugandan nightmare, the politician who went horizontal so her career could go vertical. Maybe we finally found what she cares about. What will it take to get that woman down to the border? I don't know. I don't get it. But so far, nothing's worked. Mark Coniglio. Hey, Mark Coniglio over here. Thank you. You need to find a clip of Biden in 2004 saying marriage is between a man and a woman. I do have that. Thank you very much. Great minds, Mark. Great minds. Appreciate it. Yeah, what a switch. So today, or yesterday, if we want to be Pacific, you signed into law the protection of marriage between two people that have the same downstairs plumbing. But in the very recent past, where, 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 where? Kais. Okay, thank you, Kais. I'll make sure I pronounce that right next time. Appreciate it. Leonard S., thank you. Jericho, is, wokey, is woke commie nonsense ever going away? <sighs> yes, I think so, because a pendulum always swings the other way. And no matter how far it swings to the left, which it's swinging like a motherfucker now, it's got to swing back. But the question is, Leonard, when? When? I think it will, but when? Because <clears throat> I don't know if we could survive it. If we're this fucking crazy now, my goodness, man. Miss Pepsi Girl, ga ga ga. I don't know what I just said to Kamala, but I hope she don't get mad. Because if she's listening, she knows what I just said. Yes, I think it will end, but when is the question? And that's a tall-ass order, man, because shit's gotten pretty fucking weird. I, I think we could agree on that. It's gotten pretty weird pretty fast. Arun Faye, thank you very much uh, for the Hamilton. They did this to force churches to marry. <clears throat> to marry the alphabet soup group, that's all. But is the church going to refuse that? Is the church going to fight against that? I know all of them won't because we have churches that have um, alphabet soup group priests and preachers. <laughs> Wait a minute, what? Yeah, we got churches that are with this bullshit, even though each, each of their religions who are for this shit, um, they have a, a booklet, a book that has a strict set of rules and regulations and guidelines that have uh, verses, have verbiage in the book that speaks directly against this nonsense. None your bitness, they lie about numbers. Hell yeah, they do. Like when they say that 20% of of youth or whatever are identify as trans get the fuck out of here no they don't do these jackasses not remember what it was like to be a youth filling out a survey you put what you think is right you put what you think is cool <clears throat> and if for some twisted ass reason they think that being a ku klux trans member is cool that's what they're gonna put you're shitting me Spunbury 65, thank you again. Kamala's breakfast, cream of geriatric. 
with a with a with a pinch of pubes on top. That woman is absolutely disgusting. Absolutely. Yeah, there are churches who um there are churches who agree with this shit. There are churches who allow gay priests and preachers. You, you can't. If you want to have a religion that allows that shit, then start one. We had somebody in this country start a business selling pet rocks. You can do whatever you want here. But you can't hijack an existing religion and try to contort your beliefs to fit inside the framework of that religion. Or to try to force that religion into the crazy framework of your mind or your life. It doesn't work that way. This life comes with rules. Either go by it or start something else. But they don't do that. They're parasites. They don't start their own. They find something that existing that is existing and they take it over. These are, these are social chest bursters. Remember an alien where they just burst out of their chest because they took over their body and just stated that alien inside of them? That's what they are. They're parasites. No more parasites. What did short rounds say in Indiana Jones? No more parachutes. Holy hell. Kenya from Cali, what's up? She says they did it, the Marriage Act, to force a whole lot of us to do a lot of stuff. Well, <laughs> they ain't forcing that shit over here. Man, what the? F These people are sick, man. Why would you take a religion and hijack it like that? Just do your own shit. You uncreative jackasses. That's just like Hollywood. They don't make new shit. They just take old shit and fuck it all up. They take our memories and wipe their ass with them. Scotty S., thank you. Check out Babylon B's video of Kamala's Twitter. I love Babylon B. <laughs> that shit is so funny. But the sad part is um, a lot of the shit that Babylon B posts, that's it's not far from the truth nowadays. That's extremely sad. Max Bang, thank you for the Hamilton, says Merry Christmas to, J to the JG family and chat family. Love to all. Thank you very much. Appreciate that, Max Bang. Merry Christmas to you too. To you and yours. How about that? Wish you guys health and health, because that's most important. I wish all you guys much health, because if your health isn't in order, there ain't a fucking thing else that matters. I always think about Steve Jobs. The guy's rich as shit, powerful as shit. Everything he said, people hung on his every word. Everything he put out, people were just jerking off to, basically. Uh huh, iPhone. Uh -huh. Everything he did, iPod, and then um, this illness came and none of that. Those billions didn't mean shit. So I wish health. Miss Pepsi Girl, actually, Last Crusade is my favorite. I ain't got no beef with that. My favorite is um, Temple of Doom. But any of the first three, Raiders, Temple, or uh, Last Crusade, I'm down with any of those. That Crystal Skull shit or anything else they put out, no. They can stick that up their ass because the first three are the best. Either one of the first three, I'm down to watch. It's just my favorite is uh, Temple of Doom. But Last Crusade, man, that was a shit. Junior, uh, Rex Rocker, no, Raiders. Hey, I got respect for them all. I got respect for them all. But, man, Temple of Doom? <laughs> that was the shit. But Last Crusade was tight, the Nazis and stuff. Junior. Don't call me Junior. You're going to be a lot of danger. Junior. Hey, shout out to Sean Connery. <laughs> Nicholas Skill says, I walked out of Crystal Skull. You know that's bad. <laughs> you walk out after paying all that fucking money? Man. She talks in her sleep. Yeah, Rome 13. That The Last Crusade was a shit. I would probably go... And I know I'm going to upset some people, but that's okay. I'm going to go Temple of Doom, Last Crusade, and then Raiders. That's my order. That's my order right there. Junior, 
<laughs> that was the shit, man. They made such a good team when they were tied up, and they he accidentally set the the building on fire, the castle on fire. Man, that shit was tight, man. I love that movie. Don't call me Junior. He got so pissed. <laughs> I can't get my wife to watch the part in uh, Last Crusade where they were in the catacombs and shit in Italy and the rats. My wife don't do that shit. Oh, man, I couldn't. I, she won't even watch that part. Nicholas Skills, you're right. Hit the thumbs up, guys. Like and sub, sub and like, all that other YouTube gibberish. <clears throat> DJ John T. Hello, Jericho. Steam calling you, yeah. Don't y'all know. No, that's more like uh, Midwest. You can be can figure yeah. What's up, DJ John T? Good to see you. <clears throat> yeah, River Phoenix, RIP. So sad. So sad. I don't have to watch that. I think I, now I want to watch uh, Last Crusade. That was a shit. Choose wisely. Fucking Nazis. Get it in the end. Fuck you, Nazis. <laughs> that Nazi dude uh, drank the wrong, she drank out of the wrong cup because that stupid Nazi bitch told him to. And then the Nazi, the Nazi general, the officer, or whatever, who was after him the whole time. Nick Lynch. Uh, he goes off the cliff in the tank at the end. <laughs> Would have been a lot of danger. <clears throat> Spunbrain65, again, thank you. Is Neck Buddy called Junior? <laughs> I don't think so. I think he's just Neck Buddy because I, I, he, is, he might be, um, well, not might be. He's definitely uh, mentally superior to um, John Fetterman. So I don't think, uh, I don't think we can call him Junior. If anything, Neck, or if anything Fetterman's Junior to Neck Buddy. I don't call me Junior. You were named after a dog. <laughs> I was fucked up. I was named after a dog. That was fucked up. <laughs> oh, in the beginning, when he was a kid, he was in the Cub Scouts and shit. And then they steal that cross thing and he's chasing them on the train. Man, that was a good one. That was a damn good one. I think I'm going to watch that today with the kids after I finish Terminator 2. Yes, Tim Star Neck Buddy has its own social security number. It's its own entity. It has its own ID and wallet. Fetterman holds his wallet for it because he don't got he don't got an ass. He don't got a back pocket to put his wallet in. But Fetterman holds it for him. Uh, thank you, thank you for trusting me, Neck Buddy. I only trust you because I have to, John. <laughs> Oh, man, that's perfect. That's what it's going to be from now on, guys. That's going to be it. John Fetterman is going to be da, da, neck, buddy. Da. Uh, <laughs> did I say titty? I don't remember saying titty, Room 13, but if I did, hey, I'm glad. Titty. Um, <laughs> but from now on, <laughs> no, no, Brian King B. Falcon, we keep taking it to the to the next level. Ne to next level. Um, but from now on, John Fetterman is going to be the da, da, and then the neck buddy is going to be the intelligent one. <laughs> neck buddy. Even though it's only this big, the neck buddy has all the brains. The neck buddy is the brains of the operation. Fetterman's just the muscle. Like in the old... Uh, but uh, the old Bugs Bunny cartoons, there's always that little short guy. There's a little short mobster and then the two big dumb henchmen. Dog, what do you want us to do with him, boss? And he goes, hey, shut up and like smack him or something like that, right? So that's it. That's what it's going to be from now on. <laughs> Scary Harry Flanagan. Quato was the brain. So I've been, uh, art imitates life this time. Uh, or life imitates art, excuse me. Um, yeah, man, that's going to be it. Will you will you please stop talking in that manner, John? Now, what manner are you talking about, neck buddy? This is how I talk. <laughs> you are such an embarrassment, John. Just give me something warm to put on my head. It's cold outside, John. 
Duh, I don't wear hats on my head. There's nothing inside of it. Duh. Oh, John. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, guys. We just we just discovered something hilarious. Mm -mm. So what have we covered so far? Um, they hate our country. Got it. They hate the nuclear family. Got it. You know what? That's what they say now. What did they say then? And then it's not 20, 30, 40 years ago. We don't have to go back that far. Let's see. Let's see, yo fuck. What do you used to think? Oh, here it is. Let's see. Let's see what this old bastard used to think, huh? And at this point, you got to give him credit. Because the video that I'm going to play for you now, this is when he had only been in Senate for 710 years, not 720. So cut him some slack. The president used his radio address uh, yesterday and tomorrow in the Rose Garden to talk about a constitutional amendment to ban gay marriage. You know, think about this. The world's going to Hades in a handbasket. Number one, that don't look like the Biden we have now, does it? Does that look like the one we have now? We are desperately concerned about the circumstance relating to uh, avian flu. We don't have enough vaccines. We don't have enough. Hmm. When was this video? Sounds kind of contemporary, doesn't it? Hmm. And it doesn't sound like him either. Enough police officers. And we're going to debate the next three weeks, I'm told, gay marriage, a flag amendment, and God only knows what else. I can't believe the American people can't see through this. We already have a law, the Defense of Marriage Act, where we've all voted, not where I voted and others said, look, marriage is between a man and a woman, and states must respect that. Nobody's violated that law. There's been no challenge to that law. Why do we need a constitutional amendment? Marriage is between a man and a woman. What's the game going on here? And Damn, the president Joe. used his radio address uh, yesterday. And is that Tim Russert? That, that guy, RIP to him, he died. Um, but wait, wait, hold on. No bullshit. If you took audio from this and took audio from him speaking yesterday and played it for somebody who didn't know who it was, they would think those are two completely different people. No way somebody would think, oh, that's the same guy. It's just he's a little older now. He does not sound the same. He does not look the same. The way Biden looks now, he looks like this Biden's father. What in the hell happened? What did they give us? And tomorrow in the Rose Garden to talk about a constitutional amendment to ban gay marriage. Listen to him. You know, think about this. The world's going to Hades in a handbag. No, come on, man. No, I'm serious. This isn't a joke. None of that shit. Straight to the point. Ask it. We are desperately concerned about the circumstance relating to uh, avian flu. We don't have enough vaccines. We don't have enough police officers. And we're going to debate the next three weeks, I'm told, gay marriage, a flag amendment, and God only knows what else. Tell me about it, Joe. This Joe Biden, I can get behind. If we had this Joe Biden in the warehouse, in the warehouse, <laughs> the White House, this Joe Biden I would vote for. This Joe Biden I would listen to and believe what he says. This Joe Biden would strike fear on the international stage. This one right here. Listen to the way he's talking. I can't believe the American people can't see through this. We already have a law. The Defense of Marriage Act, where we've all voted, not where I voted and others said, look, marriage is between a man and a woman, and states must respect that. Nobody's violated that law. There's been no challenge to that law. Why do we need a constitutional amendment? Marriage is between a man and a woman. What's the game going on here? And Great question, Sloppy Joe. What's the game going on here? What's the game? Great question, Joe. Now that Biden, hey, what's up? I'm listening. Go on. 
This one? I don't know. So we went from that. Thanks to our performers, Joy, Sam, and Cindy. Look, you know, and the gay man's choir, in Washington, D.C., gay man's marriage for choir. Those are the same person? That's the same person as the dude we just listened to. <laughs> That's the dude? How the fuck are those the same two people? No way. Yeah, gay mans. <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? Bro. This, that's not, that's not the same dude. Unless, unless he had serious cognitive decline. And if that's the case, that's quite a fucking decline. Not only was he decisive with his words, he was quick with his words. There was no stumbling. There was no nothing. Now that was what? A 30 second clip? Say 30 to 45 seconds? Get me 30, 30 to 45 seconds of a clear, concise Biden right now. You could take an hour-long speech and couldn't get me 45 seconds of clear, concise speech. You can't. Yeah, Mads, bro. His eyes are black now like a robot. Exactly. He has little, beady, dilated fucking eyes. Your eyes look like that if you're on ecstasy or some shit or meth. My goodness. <laughs> what? That ain't the same dude. I'm sorry. No, I'm not. That is not the same guy. D. Heather Green, he had bags under his eyes. He doesn't have them now. His eyes, his ears, the, the alignment of his jaw. all because There's all kinds of shit. And I'm not shitting on anybody for having plastic surgery. But that's just not plastic surgery. That's an overhaul. That's a remodel. Okay, if you change the outlet plates in your kitchen, that's not the same as taking a sledgehammer to the fucking island, is it? No, one is minor, one is major. Brianne Reeves, he is a clone, a puppet, Satan's puppet. Yes! <laughs> I don't agree, I don't disagree with any of that. I mean, that's... Man, how do you go from that? That's that's quite a belief, too. That's not Pepsi and Coke. That's not, oh, I never liked chocolate, but I like it now. That's not as you get older, your tastes change. That's part of your belief system. That's part of your culture, something like that. No one's going to convince you to change your mind on it. Not something like that. But he did. Flip-flop. Boom. I used to feel this way, but now, hey, everything's everything. Everything, everybody has everything. Everybody can do everything to everybody. Fucking weird. But that old Biden, I'm listening. Whatever model this is now, whatever cyborg this is we got now, not a fan at all. Oh, and uh, don't forget, web store, Jericho Green. Uh, mygreengear.com, excuse me, mygreengear.com. Still have some autograph merch or merch already available for autograph. So make sure you guys grab that before Chris, Christmas. Oh, it's something I, I saw totally unrelated to anything we've ever talked about here, probably, or certainly anything we've ever talked, we've talked about today so far. But yesterday I was uh, watching something and it had these, uh, this thing about Vlad the Impaler, you know, or who they, who people believe is uh, Dracula. And he got this name, Vlad the Impaler, because he used to impale the shit out of people through the ass, out the mouth, hundreds, thousands sometimes, you know, outside of the, the villages that he just uh, conquered or destroyed to show people this dude's a psychopath and he'll stick a pike up your ass. So one of the things he would also do is after a battle, they would take some of the soldiers that survived lay them down on the ground and put boards on top of them. And then his soldiers would dance and party on top of these boards until they were dead. <laughs> what? He would lay down the soldiers that survived. They would take them prisoner 
lay boards over them, and then party on their asses till the wee hours of the morning. That's some cold shit. <laughs> that was crazy. I was like, damn. So cold-blooded. And so, yeah, Tammy A., so barbaric. And then by our standards, it's barbaric. But back then, that's how shit was done. Those dudes were savage. We're going to party. We're going to celebrate our victory over you on top of you until you are dead. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. That's some savage shit right there. He said we're going to do dance, dance revolution on your fucking chest cavity until you're dead. Zach Kayeka, thank you for the Hamilton. So since sober-minded Joe was so against gay marriage, we can confirm his story of his father saying, Joe, they love each other. About two, about two men kissing in the 1950s was pure BS. Man, you could make a bullshit storybook about the stuff he tells us about his dad. Because I'm going to tell you this. Back then, there ain't no fucking way, number one, you weren't tonguing down your significant other if you were gay on the street. Straight people probably didn't do that. That was so taboo. That was so crass. You didn't do that kind of shit. We used to have morals and we used to have shame back in the day. Remember shame? You didn't do stuff like that. You damn sure weren't going to be no gay dude kissing your boyfriend on the street. And if for some reason you both sustained head trauma and thought this was a good idea, I'm sure that some citizen or law enforcement would quickly come up to you and tell you what a bad idea that is. No man's going to be there with his son and say, well, son, they love each other. Oh, fuck out of here. Get the... <laughs> well, they love each other, Joseph. <laughs> Shut your fucking ass up. Nobody was saying that shit in the 50s. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, right. Uh, let's see. C4 Duke, thank you. Um, Raiders are greater than the Niners, just saying. LA, Oakland, Las Vegas. <laughs> Better than San Francisco. You know that's not true. You know that's not true. And when we play the Raiders later this season, we're going to fuck you guys up. The Raiders are absolute trash. Little pirates. Arr! <laughs> You know what I do to my friends in the in our chat or in our uh, text thread when the Raiders lose, I send them pictures of Al Davis and I put "Just win, baby." <laughs> you kidding me? The Raiders fucking suck. We're gonna beat the shit out of those clowns, those fucking nomad homeless clowns. Nobody wants them. Oakland, L.A., and pretty soon Vegas won't either once they find out what a waste of money that was. <laughs> Raiders. Raider. Hey, fucking Raiders, fucker. Hey, bull. Nah, eh? Nah, fool. You're not going to talk about my fucking Raiders, eh? But oh, nah, fool. <laughs> Raiders. You guys ever see the little toys called Little Homies? They're these little plastic, like real rubber toys, and they're dressed like little cholos with the fucking, with the, with the fucking penalty, eh? just the top button, eh? I just button the top, fool. I let the rest of it fucking hang down, eh? And then I, then I fucking comb my hair with some tres flores, eh? Tres flores, eh? Nah, fool. <laughs> Raiders. Hey, fucker, nah, eh? Hey, fucking Niner fan, get your hands off my hyena, fool. That's my hyena, eh? Don't put your hands on her tits, eh? She's a fucking Raider hyena. It's <laughs> 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 oh, funny. Nah, fool. It don't matter, eh? Fucking Oakland don't want us, eh? LA don't want us, eh? But Vegas will take us, fool. They don't care who comes and pukes in their fucking stadium, eh? They don't give a fuck, eh? That's true, Socrates, Ken. Niners are going to the Super Bowl, and we know who's not. The Raiders, eh? <laughs> uh, 
Ah, fuck it. Eh. Tijuana. Hey, fuck, if, if Vegas don't want it, say we'll go to Tijuana, fool. We'll go anywhere, eh? Because we're fucking Raiders, eh? Nah, eh? <laughs> oh, man. Hey, Weapon X. No, Leroy, I'm bilingual. That's a difference, eh? There's a difference, fool. Bilingual, not bisexual, eh? I don't like that, eh? I already got a dick, eh? I don't want yours, fool. I don't want your dick, fool. <laughs> Some guy, bang, bang, Niner gang. That's right. You guys are fucking haters, eh? No, nah, for real, though, fool. Hey, fool. For real, though, eh? Hey, fool. Like, if I could, eh, I'd switch, fool. I'd be a Niner fan, eh? Fucking Niner, eh? No, we don't want you. <laughs> hey, no Leroy, no grilled cheese, fool. Nah, eh? <laughs> All right, I'll stop. No, fuck it. I'm not scared, eh? Because I'm a fucking Raider fan, eh? Nah, fool. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that's right, Jim Jones. No more locked doors. Hey, what's that on your leg? Oh, it's probably yogurt or something. No more locked doors. Sure, my Aztec warrior. Fucking Aztec warrior, eh? No, oh, fool. And you know how I can do that accent so well? <laughs> because that's who I grew up around. I grew up around high school and, element and, and uh, junior high. Or a bunch of kids that sounded just like that. Hey, kick back, eh? Kick back, fool. Hey, it was kick back and kick down, eh? Like if you want somebody to share something with you, fool, it's kick down, eh? Kick down, fool. But if you want someone to chill, tell them kick back, eh? Okay. Nah, fool. That's right, Niners por vida, eh? <laughs> Dang bud, Salinas is hella Mexican. Yes, it is. But I grew up, I went to school in Castroville, which is right next to Salinas. Right next to Salinas. <laughs> Oscar Gonzalez, play handball in Jericho in high school. Yeah, I feel hella good, eh? Get out there with my dickies, my fucking Ben Davis, eh? Hit that ball, fool. Dang, but it's Castroville is the same. Yes, it is. Sure is. Just it. Niners por nunca. Nah, fool. Your team por nunca, way. That means Niners for never. That's what por nunca means. Fuck you guys, eh? Pinche pendejos. Hey, fool. Got him, Coach 23. Why are you asking all these personal questions, fucker? I'm kidding. I'm 5'11". What's going to be the next one? I didn't know they had stacked shit that high, fool. Ah, you got me, eh? You got me, fool. You think you're funny, eh? <laughs> you think you're fucking funny? And I, what's up, Ingrid De La Rosa? Um, I had a homeboy of mine in the Navy. Uh, shout out to Zelaya. And uh, he was from L.A. Like, that, fool. So uh, I expected him. He spoke Spanish. So I was like, cool, when we go to Spain, we're good. But he was like, I don't fucking talk that shit, eh? They're speaking like proper Spanish. That's right, pendejo. They call me pendejo. <laughs> Watsonville. Oh, Kirsten Brownrig. Watson por vida. It's fucking puro Watson, homegirl. Y que, fool. Get a fucking fresa right here if you're from Watson. A fresa from Watson. Fucking alcachofa right here if you're fucking from Castro. And if you're from Salinas, you get the lechuga right here, fucker. <laughs> Got him, coach. Sock check on Big Jericho Green. Time by 13. Uh... <laughs> Paisa Powers, eh? They don't call me no fucking Paisa, homeboy. Hey, them dudes that get mad, the little Norteños and shit. They call them a Paisa, they get hella mad. Dang buds, Westside Santa Cruz. You know what's funny about Santa Cruz? Everybody goes to the boardwalk. 
And the cool thing when you're a kid and you're getting close to the boardwalk, like when you pull into Santa Cruz, you can hear everybody on the giant dipper screaming. That's a that if you don't live near a theme park, and I, it, it might be different. Maybe it's it's the boardwalk. I don't know. But man, when you get into Santa Cruz, you could hear the people screaming on the rides. You could wait, then you get close, you could see the ride. But right across the street from the boardwalk, I'm talking the boardwalk parking lot. Right next to that is called the Flats. And the Flats ain't no bullshit. Ain't nothing but heroin and serenios there. And it's it's tough. But you don't think about it because you're there with your kids. And, you know, people, you pull up, everybody's taking all their fold-up chairs and shit out because there's the beach right there. You walk across the street, the train tracks. Um, you go inside the boardwalk. You walk across the board, like the walkway, you walk across it and boom, there's a beach right there. So people getting all this shit out and you don't think about it, but at nighttime out around the boardwalk. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. The flats ain't no bullshit. The flats ain't no joke. West coast, Socrates can, you guys know. The, you don't fuck around in the flats at night. Get your ass in the boardwalk and get out. That's right. Dank buzz heroin flats. J954, thank you. Late to the party. You have to ban any fools yet? Nah, man. Nobody's been banned yet. It's been all good, good fun in here. A little shit talking about some football. That's about it. Everybody's cool. Everybody's fucking cool, eh? Kick back, fool. Hey, kick back, J954. It's not crazy in here, eh? Everybody's fucking chilling, eh? Nah, eh? They say A all the time. What, eh? Nah, eh? Why, eh? Come here, eh? Nah, eh? Shut up, eh? <laughs> all the time. <laughs> no, Jim Jones. No, don't take me to the hospital, eh? That's where people die, homeboy. That's where you go to fucking perish, eh? Fucking morir, eh? Careful. <laughs> and if you're from these areas, you know. You know. <laughs> West Coast. Fuck scraps North all day, fool. That was predominantly Northeño where I went to school. But I do remember one time this little scrap. That's what they call them. They call the Serenios, they call them scrapas. Pinche scrapa. But this little Sereno dude came from a high school from Watsonville. So word got around and they were going to, uh, these little group of Norteños were going to go fuck this dude up. They're going to go jump him, right? Everybody knew who he was. He stuck out like a sore thumb. You know, they don't dress the same and all that shit. Like, you can, you know, if you're in that culture, you know, um, you know what the other side looks like. So this little Sereno came to our school and these fools thought, you know, we got strength in numbers. We're about to go beat this fool up, man. <laughs> This Nortenio dude, one of the kids came up to me, had a screwdriver in his hand. He fucking knocks the screwdriver out of the kid's hand and gave this Nortenio kid, I'd say about a three or four piece with no biscuit right in his fucking mouth. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> just like that. All his head was just like this. Oh, that's all he was doing. Head going back and forth. He whooped the shit out of that dude, man. After he did that, the other three fucking ran. So them little, them little Serenios would, uh, would handle the business, but he also had to the police had to come and escort him home. <laughs> Some other North Daniels heard about it, showed up, and they weren't very happy. Cannon Hotep, thank you. Salute from Baltimore. Hey, man, be careful out there, damn it. I got family in Baltimore. I had never seen anything like that in my life until I went out to Baltimore to visit. Some of the things I saw there I'd never seen in real life. Crack deals. I was blown away. Please be careful out there. Hey, blood in, blood out, Miklo. I actually knew this girl. Shout out to Jamie. She was like the, the only white girl who lived in Castroville. And she hung out with all Mexican girls and they called her Mikla. That means like milkweed from that movie uh, Bound by Honor. There was this one white kid they called Miklo, but they call her Mikla. She could fight too. <laughs> that girl could fight. I feel sorry for any girl going up to her thinking, oh, you're fucking white. I'm going to kick your ass. Fucking gringa. No, nah, that girl beat the shit out of him. <laughs> Jamie did not play. DJ John T, thank you, man. I appreciate that super, the super sticker. That girl could fucking scrap. Ingrid De La Rosa, what? She said, Negro. <laughs> uh, we played uh, <clears throat> my 
brother and his family came out from Texas. Shout out to you guys. And uh, we played Mexican bingo. And, uh, you know, it's Caballero and all these different things, right? And one of the characters on the card is Negrito, right? The little black guy. <laughs> it is. It's just fucking it's part of the game. What are you going to do? And, <laughs> um, I know, Ingrid. I'm just playing with you. But um, So the first time they read the card, they were like, Negrito? Like, oh, sorry, I got to read it. <laughs> this shit was funny. Oh, man. DMW247 TV. What's up, man? He said, thank God for traffic on the GW Bridge. Because, hold on. Comments jumped on me. You know, it's active in here, DMW. Um, because I would have crashed <laughs> laughing so hard. Well, I'm glad I could help, man. I'm glad you didn't crash. We need you here. Mike Tyson, too. Thanks for being here. Peace out, bro. Be careful. <laughs> so funny. <clears throat> oh, man. <clears throat> Good time. A lot of California folks up in here. You guys know how it is. You know this nightmare we're living over here on the left coast? You know this fucking nightmare? Sonora, Pasadena, Fremont. Fremont's up by the bay. You want to drain your bank account? Go move to the Bay Area. Take care of all that extra money you thought you had. C4 Duke, again, thank you. What's that ray of sunshine in the darkness over there? <laughs> That'd be me. Yeah, man. Um, the Bay Area? <sighs> bro. Oh, speaking of the Bay Area. So I told you guys, I went there a few weeks ago with some friends, and I saw some homeless shit on the ground from a human yes it was human shit and a broken glass from a car window so i knew i was in san francisco or san fran shithole needles and shit california sunny singh from fresno man you have the only two things in fresno farms and heat no i take that you know scratch that the only two things in fresno heat and gangs that's what's in fresno that's what's in Fresno. Metal Metal is why you're from Baco, Bakersfield. Not much in Bakersfield. It's kind of one of those towns you just fly through. Some of the worst fog I've ever seen in my life was going through Bakersfield. You couldn't see past the end of your, your hood, the hood of your car. I mean, a Thule fog, whatever you call that shit. And I believe the worst <clears throat> car accident in U.S. history was in Bakersfield. It was like a 27-car pileup or something because of that fog. Um, let's see, Jim Jones from San Fran shithole, but stay in Fremont now left SF when Gavin became Lieutenant governor. Yeah. That's when it started getting all bad. Redwood city, another, uh, Bay area, uh, area, <laughs> but, um, you know, we're laughing and having a good time, but I'm about to switch to something that's not so funny. Um, so you guys may or may not have heard that guy, his name's Twitch. He was the the black dude who was the DJ and who would dance and shit on the Ellen DeGeneres show. And he was on, so you think he could dance and stuff. He was big in that world. <clears throat> but he died. He committed suicide yesterday. And so you see this outpouring. Oh, my goodness. And so sad. And my heart goes out. My heart's broken. And everyone's heartbroken. And check in on people. And mental health. And all these things. And yes, they're important. But I... I'm going to play family's advocate. I'm going to play the child's advocate because all too often, and we see it more because of celebrities and more people know them. So more people are going to talk about them. But what you had, uh, what's his name? Robin Williams killed himself. And then that guy, Chris something, the lead singer from Radiohead and um, Soundgarden, he killed himself. <clears throat> and the lead singer from Lincoln Park, he killed himself. And these dudes left behind wives and children. And so this Twitch dude, he killed himself and he left behind his wife and three kids. And there's no good time to lose your parents or your father. But two weeks before Christmas, Chris Connell. Thank you, country girl. That was his name. Chris Connell. Great fucking singer, too. Chris Connell had an awesome voice. If you guys, I don't even know if you listen to this kind of music, but if you go uh and watch the video or listen to the song called black hole sun what an awesome talent and miss pepsi girl quote unquote killed themselves i've heard of that too 
Corn, it was a Cornell, Chris Cornell, sorry. Um, but some people are saying, you know, it's it's uh Cornell. Thank you, Chozo Ghost. Cornell, not Connell, Cornell. So these dudes kill themselves and they leave behind these families. But all anybody ever talks about is poor them, um, check on people, mental health. Like it's not their fault. It is their fucking fault. That's the most selfish thing you can do. It's bad enough, and I'm and I'm only talking about adults, P- people under eighteen who kill themselves. I don't fault them because they're they're not adults; they're kids. But an adult, when you kill yourself, it's bad enough that you hurt your parents who might be left or your your friends and family who love you. But your wife and your fucking kids, yeah, audio slave, yeah, Ingrid De La Rosa, audio slave, and uh, Soundgarden. He was part of two, both of those groups. I believe Soundgarden first, but you leave behind your wife and your family. So your wife has to get your kid, has to gather your children and tell them that daddy is dead. You got to sit there and break your children's heart. That is fucked up. I don't give a fuck about what they were dealing with. We're all dealing with shit. Now, your family's really dealing with some shit. Now you've left your wife to raise those kids. Now you've given those kids a life without their father. So you talk about dealing with some shit. Now those kids really got to deal with some shit. And if they're old enough, are they going to think, was it my fault? Was I too much? Was I too much of a burden on him? What if I wasn't here? Would he have done that? Was I a strain on his life? You took their father away from them. That is fucking horrible. You get no sympathy for me because of your fucking demons. You just gave people demons. You gave your children demons. You gave your wife a demon because you fucking checked out. That shit is weak, man. That's selfish as fuck. I remember having a friend when I was in high school and his fucking brother hung himself in a tree in the front yard. So his mother had to come home and scream and cry and try to grab her son by the legs and lift him up so he wasn't choking himself. So your wife had to come in And find your ass dead. And they don't know. They didn't say how he did it. But most men shoot themselves. Men aren't pill poppers or wrist cutters. We hang ourselves and we shoot ourselves. But again, we don't know how he took himself out. But how in the fuck do these people... Somehow get support after death. Heidi Booth, TMZ said a gun. So this dude probably shot himself. Now, take away what we've seen in the movies. You guys know what it looks like when somebody shoots themselves? Very messy. Very messy, and it's not the face that you remember. Another thing, if somebody shoots themselves... And let's say you shoot yourself in the house. The police don't clean that up. There's no police cleanup crew. Don't worry, ma'am. We'll get all this cleaned up before we leave. They take the body. They process the scene and they take the body. You're left with the brains and the teeth and the hair everywhere. So she either has to clean that up herself or have a service come in to clean that up. What the fuck, man? Mental medalist's wife, her godson, killed himself. I'm sure that left a hole in the family that'll never be filled. Nate DZ502, my stepmom killed herself and blamed it on us kids and my biological father. I agree. Selfish as fuck. It is. And it's sad because you want to grieve for them. You lost somebody. But why did you do that? Why did you do that to us? 
You didn't reach out for help? Just fucking horrible, man. And it pisses me off to see all these people. Oh, it's mental health is so bad. Check on your loved ones. What the fuck? This dude killed himself two weeks before Christmas, and he has three small children and a wife. What the fuck? All the, all the time, it's all about the person who killed themselves. Mental health. Mental health. What about these children's mental health? What about the wife's mental health, where she has to hold it together in front of her kids? Or maybe she can't. Arun Faye, thank you for the Twomsky. Chris Cor Cornell and Chester Bennington didn't self-delete. They were investigating child trafficking in the industry and got taken out. Look into it. Chester's dad is someone infamous. Could be. There are plenty of people who, who, you know, who do that shit. What's another one? Anthony Bourdain. He had a daughter. He had like a 12-year-old daughter. 12 year, a 12-year-old girl, and you're going to kill yourself. Dad commits suicide, 12 years old, adolescence, hormones. This is when you bail on her? I don't know. I don't. That's the way I feel about it, man. That shit is fucked up. Ingrid De La Rosa, your life changes forever. It does. You send a shockwave through your family and friends that can never be repaired, especially your family, your, your parents, and if you have siblings. And then there's self-doubt there. Should I, should I have seen the signs? Were there signs that I missed? Could I have done something to help stop this from happening? Could I have done something, especially if you're a parent? Or sibling, what if you were close? I was so close and I didn't see the signs. You don't see the signs because they don't want you to, to see them. They don't want you to see the signs. They're hiding it from you. And I wish those people who are left behind from this shit could know that. I wish that they would know that it's not your fault. They were hiding it from you. You can't see something if they're hiding it. Man. That is just fucking horrible, man. It really is. Just, man. Those poor kids. Those poor damn kids. Just, just imagine. You're, you're, as a little kid, you, well, you're at school. Yeah, kids are still in school now. They haven't got out for Christmas break. You're at school. You come home. Why, why is everybody here, mom? Where's dad? Where's daddy? Then you got to watch, watch the moment, the moment that their life changes forever. Before these words come out of your lips, these children are normal and they're fine and they're happy. But after you utter the sentence, daddy's dead or daddy's gone, you can't get that back. You can't take those words back. That kid has changed forever. So shitty for the kids and the wives. Or, you know, if it's a husband who does it, though, or, you know, a wife who does it, the, whoever's left behind, the family who's left behind, I feel horrible for him. J954, thank you again. He says, in 2013, my best friend killed himself. He actually drank himself to death. I remember he told me he didn't want to fight his disease and gave up. Sad. It is. It really is. And you're left with that. You know, you're left with that shit. It's fucking horrible. Fucking horrible. Jimmy Minor, I'm sorry to hear that, man. I'm, you know, it's fucked up. But, you know, it's, it's the kids, man. They don't, they don't know nothing about your stress and your demons and all that shit. They just know that their dad's gone. They just know that their parent is gone. Golly, man, that's fucked up. I'm so tired. What pisses me off, it, it just pisses me off that people, you don't hear people talking about the bad side of it. It's just about the person who did it. It's all about them. It's not about them. Look what they left behind. Nate DZ 502 said, I know this is your show, but can we change the subject? Yeah, man, we'll move on. 
I think I made my point. Don't forget, web store, mygreengear.com. What a segue, right? Oh, boy. Oh, hold on. Got that one. Hey, how about we laugh at Jimmy Kimmel? <laughs> how does that sound? When in doubt, laugh at Jimmy Kimmel. That's what I like to do, you whiny little bitch. Never seen the dude cry so much in my life. Let's see. And I'll probably, let's say I'm gonna put up Jimmy Kimmel cries. See how many videos that brings up. Jimmy Kimmel cries. <laughs> Computer will probably starts smoking. Well, let's see. No, I don't see any new ones. Six months ago, 11 months ago, five years ago, seven years ago, six months ago, seven years ago, five years ago. You cry a lot, man. You cry a lot, Jimmy. See, somebody sent me that. Let me see if I can find a link. Because that shit was funny. Let's see. Nope. Can't find that one. Oh, another thing I want to talk about is um, so what's that girl's name? Megan the Stallion. And it pisses me off because we all know that a stallion is what? A male horse. So why would a woman name herself a stallion? Pisses me off every time. Um see J954, thank you again. He says, Oh damn, JG. Where are we at on the neck buddy bobble? I've already sent the email. She usually takes her a couple days to, you know, get something together to show me to kind of like, what do you think? We'll tweak it and shit. But the mail, the email has been sent, J954. So the wheels are turning. The snowball is rolling down the hill. But she is um, testifying, smoke the ghost because of that booty. I know. But still, it just fucking, it just pisses me off. It's, why would you say a stallion? Ugh. Um, but she is testifying. So was it a year ago or something? Um, <laughs> she was out partying with a bunch of thug ass jackasses. And one of them was this rapper slash singer named um, Tory Lanez. And apparently, because that's what that's what happens when you mess with whores. That's what happens when you mess with women who give their vagina to anybody who makes eye contact with them. It all gets intermixed. It all gets messy. Everybody's fucking everyone. And when you're fucking everybody, feelings get involved and people get hurt. So apparently... Um, she was fucking him and he's fucking everybody else. Just a big, big, uh, orgy with these people. Everybody's fucking everyone. She got mad and she said something about him, about his music or something. And then that's when he flipped out, grabbed his gun and shot her in the foot twice. I don't know if she got shot twice or one of, one of the shots was a ricochet, but she got hit twice in her foot. <laughs> fucking stupid ass. What a, what a don't get shot in the damn foot over some fucking relationship bullshit or who you're fucking what an idiot what ghetto trash you are lds german shepherd boy thank you there is a special spot reserved in hell for the fans of the playground really sickens me that this has become mainstream yeah a lot of shit a lot of this bullshit has become mainstream against our will too but she had to testify right um, so she gets on the stand after being shot in the foot twice. Okay. This is what happens. Exactly. Careless, uh, Harlem night style, except this wasn't as funny. Um, she's on the stand under oath. Okay. Under oath. Asked why she didn't initially report the shooting. Megan said she didn't trust the police and feared for Lane's life. So you, he just shot you, and you're worried about his life. Apparently, he wasn't too worried about yours. She says, and I quote, At the time, we are at the height of police brutality, she said, referencing the 2020 protests following the killings of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor. I felt like if I said, this man has just shot me, they might shoot first and ask questions later. I don't feel safe in the car. I don't feel safe with police officers either, Megan said. 
in the black community, it's not really acceptable to be cooperating with the police, she added. You stupid, ghetto trash, hood rat bitch. In the black community? Fuck that. You just got shot in your foot, you jackass. And you didn't call the police because you thought they would shoot first. That's what the cops do. They pull up on the scene, they pull their gun out, and they just start shooting. Then they interview everybody. And if you live, you'll get interviewed. What a stupid piece of ghetto trash. Oh, what's it, George Floyd, Beyond the Tail? I didn't want him to get shot. What the fuck is wrong? <laughs> Stupid ass. A group of men, I say four men and a doctor, need to hold her down and give her a hysterectomy. You don't need to be making no more children because they're going to be even more stupid than your dumb ass is, you hoe. You're a damn pincushion. Oh, every, everybody's fucking you. But at the time in the bank community, you stupid asshole. John Lamas, thank you. I can't stand Kimmel. Every single show has a mention of Trump or the right. Every single day, zero credibility. Those dudes aren't funny anymore. They don't have to be funny. They just have to be political. You guys got the nerve to talk about Trump with that mush mouth son of a bitch in the White House and you're picking on the old president? What about this treasure trove right in front of you? Biden is six months of material off of one speech. And you're talking about the other guy that was here? My goodness, man. What a dumb hood rat bitch you are. I didn't want the cop to show up and shoot first and ask questions later, you know what I'm saying? Fucking idiot. Yeah. Is this is for real. She should be locked up just for being a dumb hood rat. Too bad it's not illegal to be a dumb hood rat. You know, the black community, I mean, it's not cool to cooperate with the police. Well, look what hanging out with these fucking thugs got you. Two hot ones in your foot, Megan. Megan the dumbass. Oh, and since we're talking about Jimmy Kamel. I would be remiss if I didn't bring this up. Because whenever you think Jimmy Kimmel, you must think about this. You must. Because that's all Jimmy talks about is Trump and the, and the right and the woke and the Republicans and the racists in America. All this shit, you know? That's all you do is talk about how racist they are and all this stuff will... Racist? Well, then what the fuck do you call this, Jimmy? Republicans, racist, remember? The right, Republicans, racist, our words, right? Republican, racist, right? Republican, racist. Go, Jimmy. Sometime at night, Paul Malone look up in sky and say, what the hell going on up there? Do UFO live on other planet, phoning home like E.T.? Come along, read on TV about white people getting deducted by aliens, sticking all kind of hell up their butt. And that's a damn thing. Now, Come along never seen no flying saucer himself, but if he do, that's going to be a spooky time. That's why Come along say government got to step up and give 102% to keeping them little green men off this here earth. Because the day them dudes stick something up Come along, but that's going to, well, that ain't going to be no good time for nobody, especially Carl Malone, but listen up, E.T., you better stay the hell back. Nanu, nanu. Until next time, this year, Carl Malone. Hmm. That was funny back in the day, wasn't it? Not now. Now that's blackface. I'm just wondering. I just wanted to check in with Jimmy, see what, what he had been doing. Because he's crying about all this shit. <laughs> But he was, but he was just, you know, all coming on there, my butt, all that kind of shit. So that's great. What do they call it? Hippopotamus? No, hip, hippo. 
hip, uh, hip, hip, uh, oh, hypocrisy. <laughs> That's what it is. That's what it is. Thank you, Sean McPeak. I was trying to, the word was on the tip of my tongue. I was like, man, what the, what do they call that shit? What do they call that? What do they call this shit when they're doing the shit that they're crying about? And not that that, you don't need to cry about that. Like, so it was a comedy show. It was a bit. So what? But now, that's the kind of shit that you want to cancel people for. Which is weird. But something that you took part in and were paid off of and got cheers and adulation for, now you want people, oh, oh, they need to. They need to be canceled and need to be fired and take away their ability to make money and all that shit, right? Fucking assholes. Assholes, all of them. Guys, what a great live stream this was today, wasn't it? Wasn't it? Kristen Brownrigg, still funny. Yeah, I mean, exactly. At the time, everybody's laughing because it was funny. It's just that they change the rules, you know, when it benefits them. Now all the same shit that they got rich off of. It's just like James, Cam James Cameron's bitch ass, you know, saying that all oh, the th the films I used to make were chock full of toxic masculinity and and testosterone is a poison. Yeah, after you've gotten rich off of it, after you've gotten after you made your your hundreds of millions and your billions, yeah, now it's a problem. Remember. Those with a full stomach are first to insult the food. Now, let's end on that, shall we? Thank you to everybody for being here. Your comments, your questions, your super chats, your time, whether you're watching and listening, maybe you're just listening. You got me on in the background. Or maybe you're watching and not listening, the sound off, and you're just looking at me. Whatever, I'll take it. Thank you, guys. Eight billion sons of bitches in this world, and you chose this one. I'm forever in your debt. Manana, oh boy, there's a few things I didn't even get to today. <laughs> I'm going to have to cover tomorrow. There's so much shit going on. Like an overflowing plate of food that you're trying to carry to the table. Just overflowing. That's what we got here. We'll talk about this shit. Manana, don't forget, go to mygreengear.com. 10% off green gear. I think what I'm going to do is maybe do a video or two. Uh, right now, and just post it up on my page because I'm sure gonna have, I'm gonna have a bunch of shit that happens over the night that we're gonna have to talk to overnight that we're gonna have to have to talk about tomorrow. Hold on, smoke the ghost. You're getting ahead of me. You were great. I was great. We were great. Say it with me, damn it. Now we can go smoke the ghost. You know how it goes. I try to be done with the left, but they just won't let me. Please subscribe. Hit that notification bell because every time it rings, a piece of shit lefty cries. Utilize the link tree link. Get your ass over to JerichoGreen.net and MyGreenGear.com. I am Jericho Green. Man, I'm out.